is the Lincoln quote. The money powers prey upon the nation in times of peace and conspire against it in times of adversity. It is more despotic than monarchy, more insolent than autocracy, more selfish than bureaucracy. I see in the near future a crisis approaching that unnerves me and causes me to tremble for the safety of my country. Corporations have been enthroned. An era of corruption will follow, and the money power of the country will endeavor to prolong its reign by working upon the prejudices of the people until the wealth is aggregated in a few hands and the republic is destroyed. Wall Street has killed Main Street. So I know how unpopular it is to be seen as helping banks right now especially when everyone is suffering in part from their bad decisions. I promise you, I get it. Up until about the Kennedy assassination and the beginning of the war in Vietnam, the United States is a very powerful engine for world progress. It's the assassinations, the Kennedy assassination, and the others in the 1960s, the beginning of the Vietnam War, and the beginning of the absolute domination of the Wall Street group over every other interest. Nobody else counts except the Wall Street money masters. That has now made the United States into uh, no longer a force for progress, but something very different, often a force for destruction in the world. The military-industrial complex has taken over the country along with the Wall Street gang. If you look also at the people that Obama has put on his appointments list, it's all Wall Street. It's government of Wall Street, by Wall Street, and for Wall Street. There's nobody from heavy industry. There's nobody from the auto sector, nobody from Silicon Valley, nobody from big oil, nobody from defense, no labor, no women, no retirees, no small business, nothing. It's pure Wall Street. The only people who have a voice in Obama's councils are Wall Street finance oligarchs. That's all there is. Nobody else counts for anything under Obama. It's the most extreme Wall Street administration we've ever had. Presidency you've got to remember is that this is a puppet post. It's automatically going to be a puppet post. The idea that Obama is somebody who's going to come in and exercise real authority when he's obviously been chosen and given everything that he's got by these financiers. They give him the money, they give him the bundling, they give him vote fraud, they give him the media whores, they give him goons, they even have elected officials making threats to put people in jail if they criticize Obama in public. All of this is the mark of a puppet, uh, and that means that he is uh, a puppet, actually more of a puppet than anybody else, more of a puppet than Mrs. Clinton would have been, even more of a puppet than, than McCain. He's the maximum puppet that we've had certainly since, since Jimmy Carter. They put a black face on the New World Order, and now we all happy. KRS ain't buying it. In the real executive power structure, the president serves the military-industrial complex. It's cell phone by the international bankers. If there's a revolution, the population just throws out the prime minister or president. The elite stays in power because the public is never aware of who the real enemy is. In Evian, France in 1991, standing before the Bilderberg Group, the apex of the world government power structure, David Rockefeller defined the New World Order as a system of world government serving the international banking elite. For decades, the banker-owned media would attack anyone who dared to warn the public that a dictatorial world government was being constructed right under their nose, and that national sovereignty was being deliberately destroyed. And now, after years of denial, the media and the elite themselves are proudly announcing that not only is world government real, but it is the answer to the financial crisis that they carefully engineered.